Yo, brothers. It's been a little while, but it's time to get back in this cobalt. My goodness, I can't, I can't even count how many times I've said that on videos where I've stopped and started and put it aside and then brought it back. And <laughs> but anyway, we're at the new shop. Got some of this filmed already at the old shop, so we're gonna go back and check that out in a minute. But I got the die grinder, got my sandpaper, I'm ready to go. Also got this chest mount for the GoPro Hero 1, old school, seeing if this works. Let me know what you guys think about it. Um, and we'll go from there. Otherwise, I'm gonna get going on this. You'll see what happened and then you'll catch up with me here now. All right, brothers, welcome back to the final installment of this porting work we've been doing on this LSJ engine. So this one is just for the intake manifold. I've already done some work on it already, so I'm filming my intro a little later, but that's fine just to get you guys an idea. So what we're doing here is making sure that the porting that I'm doing on the intake is going to match the ports on the head itself. Because, as you can see on the head here, this gasket can move around quite a bit and make or break the port match. All right, so the way that we're gonna do this port transfer, or should I say the gasket transfer, is we've got masking tape on the back side. As you can see, it kind of sticking out from the side. I have it matched up like I was doing when I was porting it. And then what I'm gonna do is use this black weather stripping adhesive and I'm gonna smear it on here in the centers and around and then even on the intake too as well so that when I press it down, it'll stick to it and then it'll raise the gasket back up. And the one thing, the gasket barely moves around on these studs, but what I'm gonna do is when I'm putting it down is force the intake all the way up so that it's in the same spot so then when I go to mount it on the head for final assembly I'm also going to push it all the way up so it's in the same exact location so the ports match up correctly. So here's what it looks like when it's all pulled off. They're pretty much dead center on it but that's only when I put the gasket up and in the right spot so if I just lackadaisically put the gasket on the head somewhere and just kind of place it on there, that gasket might actually create a ledge. And it might have been that way from the factory where it had a little bit of a ledge going on and actually the airflow is getting, hitting a wall pretty much, which could kill a lot of flow. So I'm just gonna touch this a little bit. I'm not gonna bring it completely out to there because I don't wanna to go too far and then accidentally create a ledge going into the head from this. So. I'm just gonna touch it up, get it a little bit bigger, and then smooth out all the ribs in there that I was talking about before. You can see the lip here and how it has this big ledge here. I'm gonna smooth that out. I gotta clean this intake out first, especially taking these cores out. I got quite a bit of coolant in the manifold itself, so it's kinda hard to see, but if you guys have ever taken the Luminova cores out, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of fluid that gets caught up in the intake. So I gotta clean that out and dry it out so that when I'm cutting, and flapping, all the debris doesn't turn into mud and get caked in there and that's gonna be way harder for me to clean. So what I'm gonna do is clean it out now, but before I gotta take this gasket off, because it probably won't stay there when I go to clean everything. So the best thing to use is what's called dicum. And a lot of times we use this for doing valve seats and whatnot, you put this on and it stains it pretty much. It's like a paint, Let's see what color it is very distinct and it stains really nicely. So that putting that on there, that'll stay in there when I clean it so that I won't have to worry about it washing away as and my the, he's sniffing and the shit it. smells so good. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely got a potent smell, I'll tell you that. So when it comes to cleaning this thing out, the best is to use wash solvent like I would in the tank over there, but I'm not gonna be using that because I'm trying to help. Whoa! Almost lost it there, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to make it so that you guys can also do it. And I know that everybody has a solvent wash tank. So the best way to do this is with brake clean because it'll clean all the trash out of it, but I'll also be able to put some compressed air in there and dry it off real quick so that it'll actually be dry. Because if I'm just like washing it with soap and water, it's kind of hard to get the water out of it or you know, you gotta let it sit for a long amount of time. But the brake clean, evaporates really quick so it dries out really fast so you throw some compressed air on it and it dries up really nice so I'm gonna do that real quick shoot it all up shake it up and make sure I got everything out and then blow some compressed air and get this thing cleaned up so we can start porting all right so I cleaned it out pretty nicely with the brake clean it's all nice and dry now that I threw the air through it and you can see a lot of times brake clean will take off like 
Sharpie material or things like that marking, like a pen or something, but that's the diagram. I mean, I didn't spray it right on and try and rub it off, but at least I know I got some on it and it still stayed on there, so we're good to go. And I mean, it's kind of hard to see in there, but you can believe me, it's clean in there. And it's right. So I've pinned it in between two blocks of wood to keep it upright while I'm working on it. And first thing we're gonna attack is the ridge in there, the lip, the hump, whatever you wanna call it, because it's pretty aggressive. So I'm gonna smooth that out to the lower portion there and just make it a nice transition. And the one thing I do gotta pay attention to is the wall thickness. There's a decent amount from right at the mouth here, but as it goes in further at that lower portion, it actually gets really thin, so I just gotta watch how much I take out and just make sure I'm really only cutting the front ledge here and not the, the more inner ledge here, because it gets pretty thin. So we got this first port done, at least on the bottom. I still gotta do the top, but just to keep you updated. Oops. So basically what I did, let me make sure this lighting is good. So it's kind of hard to see with all the, the fact that it's really flashy, reflective. But I basically, instead of having that lump like I was saying, now I smoothed it out. I didn't take too much off, and I did leave a good amount of this lip, because like I was saying, I don't wanna go too far. Because if I go too far, then I'm going to hurt it more than I'm going to help it. And we definitely don't want to do that. So, kind of snuck up on it, took that lip down. I still got to do it on the top. And then obviously on the rest of them. And then I'm just going to take flat paper and smooth it out. Alright, so we got them all smoothed out on the bottom. Looking good. Looking good. See now there's no ledge. It's really hard to get the light in here. And one thing is I had all that overhead light at the old shop. I don't have any of that here, and I'm realizing how essential that stuff was. So I'm definitely gonna have to do something when I do serious bench work like this, because I cannot see in the porch very well. And it's kind of hard to hold the flashlight and do that thing at the same time, but if uh, you guys can still see it though. You can tell that the ledge is just, I smoothed it out. I mean, it's not, it's pretty smooth, it feels nice. And then I just gotta do the tops still. So you can see how I did kinda hit them a little bit because I did do the mouse. And like I was saying, I wasn't gonna go all the way up. I wasn't gonna go all the way up to the lines. So I left a little bit. Some of that's a little overspray on the dicum. But this stuff held up for months. Like if you think about it, this has sat on here. I mean, not that it was like sitting in the weather or anything, but for two months it's been on there, ready to cut. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I got the mouse where I want them to be, and I'm just gonna hit with the sandpaper once I'm done with that. But first I'm gonna hit the tops and get those smoothed out because you can see how heavy that lip is. Just from, yeah, with the flashlight, you can see how heavy the lips are still on the top. Smooth those bad boys out. Bulk of it's done with the carbide. Now with the top, it's totally different. The bottom is pretty much just those lips going down, except for on the one side where I really had to kind of dig out, I forget which one, I think it was this one, where we really had to dig out this side and go in with it. But then the tops have a lot more bumps. It's kind of hard, you can kind of see the bump here. And then you have this, this ridge in here, that bump. And then you have this on the side too. And there's just a lot going on on the top to smooth out, but uh, wasn't too hard. I mean, all this was pretty quick with the carbide. And then at this point, I'm just gonna smooth it out with the sandpaper just so there's no ridges, make sure there's no more lips. Cause there are just a few little lips where I've cut with the carbide and dug in one area and didn't really go around to get it smooth. But that's what the sandpaper's for. So then I'm gonna swap my fitting, get this guy on it and get my sandpaper on it and finish it up. One other thing I forgot to mention earlier, I just saw it when I was sanding is the, this piece right in here. I don't know if it's on every untake, I just noticed it on mine, it may be the same on everyone, but it has like this piece where it almost looks like some of the aluminum or the cast had like this pit or this hole, and a bunch of the aluminum just bunched up right here and created a little, a big rough patch. And you can kind of see I took a lot of it down already, but just check yours. I'm actually curious, let me, get, let me know if you guys have your intakes off and check out and let me see, or let me know if you have that same patch or maybe it was just the casting that mine went in. But either way, that's gotta go. So, 
getting that out too. All sanded up, all ready to go. It looks perny. Although this camera just doesn't catch a lot of it because it's so bright in there. But just bare, and I got rid of that spat. You see, you can't even see that patch there anymore. Just sweet. So now, of course, I gotta clean this thing up big time because there's a lot of metal around it, in it. And if I let that go, we're gonna get metal in the engine. We can't have that. So for now, I'm just gonna take the air hose, blast it out as best I can. I'm gonna run some, uh, some brake clean probably through it so it'll evaporate real quick and it doesn't collect water in it. But then before I go and assemble it, I'm definitely gonna do a super clean on it just to make sure that there's nothing in there because for obvious reasons. So I'm gonna air hose this thing out, get that done. I'm not gonna show you that. It's very anticlimactic, so. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Just like the video, subscribe, you know, the usual stuff. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one.